Hi, this is Steve, and welcome back to another episode of Tech Leader Talk. Would you like some insights to improve how to use AI in your business to boost innovation and efficiency? Well, that's one of the topics that I'm talking to about today with AJ Malik. He's an artificial intelligence expert, and he's the CEO of secondmind.ai. And he's also author of the book, Artificial Intelligence for Wireless Networking. And during our discussion, AJ shares his thoughts on how AI will impact business in the future. And he specifically talks about three main areas where AI can be applied in any business, and that's in products, processes, and customer support. And he's going to give some examples of, of that and why he feels those are the three important areas uh, that AI can help your business. He also explains the best ways for companies to take advantage of AI today to improve their innovation and their efficiency, and talks about his ideas about democratizing AI and its business impact. Um, AJ also shares some insights about the Studio X AI platform that was developed by the team at secondmind.ai. And he explains his desire to create AI tools to improve personal lives, enhance their performance at work, and also to enable learning and growth. So he's got a lot of different aspects about AI that he's interested in and has worked in, and he's gonna share that today. So I'm sure you're gonna get some valuable information from AJ that you can use in your own business. So let's get to the conversation. Hi, AJ. Welcome to the Tech Leader Talk podcast. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for having me here. So I told the audience a little bit about your background, but of course, want to save the best for, for our discussion right now. Um, I love to hear the kind of the, the background uh, or the story, the journey, how you got to where you're at today. And I know the audience has given me feedback. They like those stories too. So tell us how you got to all the exciting things you're doing in AI today. <laughs> wow. Well, I'm old now, so I have like over 30 years I have been working and uh, I started my journey in India in IIT. Uh, I did computer science there and uh, then I moved to US in 94 and uh, then I worked for companies like Bay Networks, Motorola, Cisco, uh, Google, you know, the way I, <laughs> it's very interesting, the way I treat companies in Silicon Valley are like their departments of one big company, Silicon Valley. I, I, I moved between departments and uh, that got me a lot of exposure, a lot of exposure. I was lucky. I think the biggest thing I will say in my career is I got a lot of good bosses and good projects and it kept happening. Honestly, because of, it's just random, right? Like random, where we are in life is random. Same thing, what job, what project, what boss, it's all random. I was lucky I got like, I'm still in contact with my first boss, Madhuresh, and then Sujay and Anthony and uh, Amandeep, so many bosses, and I'm in still touch with them. And they shaped me. I got a lot of opportunity to learn. I created my own companies. This is, then I created my third company. Uh, this is all doing AI. I was doing AI in Google and then I moved. I started this own company six years back. And uh, believe it or not, my final year project in school in 1989 was AI. Although then it went into a winter, nothing happened. But then 10, 15 years later, AI is hot and uh, I'm enjoying this. Okay, interesting. It's funny that you mentioned uh, Bay Networks. I haven't heard that name in a lot, long time. Because probably about the same time you moved here, I moved to Silicon Valley, like 94, 95, and worked for, again, one of my mentors worked for the law firm that was with there, and he's a fantastic man. He's passed away now, but I learned so much from him. But one of the very first clients I worked on was Bay Networks. And and I would fly to Boston because they were merged with Wellfleet, I think was one of their founders. Wellfleet, Wellfleet. So I'd fly out to a little town, Bellarica or something like that. Oh, yeah, uh, outside. I know very well. I have been there many times. Okay, so outside, so... It's a small world. That was fun work and, and some of the first really cool high-tech stuff that I worked on. So Great company, great people. My boss there was Basil Alwan and Jane Lee. I had an amazing people. Okay, good. It's always great to hear those stories because yeah, there was always some kind of connection. Probably the listeners have they have some kind of a connection too with one of the, the places you've worked or at least your journey. Yes. So AI is 
of what you do and it's what you've done done for a long time this is probably a, a an oversimplified question but how is it changing the future of business i mean we see all the articles and we hear about chat gpt and some of the other tools but especially in the technology world how is it changing now and how do you think it's going to be changing uh, tech companies okay so i tell you this you know like personal computer changed the world right mm -hmm. internet changed the world netscape changed the world right when netscape the browser came the world changed okay yeah. and everything changed after that cell phone changed the world right a lot of things have been like real big game game changers in the world right or I would say go back, electricity, you know, like when uh, in 1900 it came and it created the whole world, right? The appliances, the industry, so much, right? Yeah. AI is exactly like that. It okay. is turning businesses into powerhouses of innovation and efficiency. Okay. okay. I'll tell you, my own company, we, and I'm not trying to say it like, oh, we are really good or amazing, but we are like perform we are performing at 25 times the rate we a normal company will do because we use ai so much we our each person is producing so much output and so much high quality output you, it's unbelievable and that is what ai does it brings innovation and efficiency to a whole new level and efficiency comes in so many forms you know Efficiency is all about like, uh, you can think of efficiency as automation, analyzing, simplifying, right? All those things that bring efficiency. So that's what AI mm -hmm. is doing to the world. Okay. Business will be so high productive, high revenue. You will see a lot of companies, you know, like there used to be a matrix. I think still it revenue per employee mm -hmm. in the companies, right? They do that. I think you will see revenue per employee grow to 10 times in next three to five years. Because yeah. AI can automate some of those so routine much. tasks we don't like to do and do it just so much faster. So and much. And maybe... not just routine. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. No, no you go ahead. No, so not only routine tasks, like some innovation, some things like, you know, we were just talking about like uh, audio for the podcast or video, right? Just imagine like your AI is updating, fixing, cleaning the audio, making the video better, removing the things which are not okay. and finding the right clips automatically. So like, it's like a full person, full assistant there to serve you. Yep. And it's true. It's funny you mentioned that because I was just doing that last night on a, a podcast episode. We wanted to find three three good little 30 to 60 second clips to to pull the video. And I kind of listened. I had some ideas, but I just, you know, fed it into a, an AI routine. So give me 20. And all 20 were, were fantastic. It's like, I did, a couple of them I didn't even remember from the from the audio. I'm like, wow. And then so I so I picked three, but yeah, I, I get that answer in five seconds. Yeah. And then then I can use my creative skills, which which are most valuable to the audience and what would people want to hear. But that saved me having to listen through a 35 minute audio and still maybe miss something. So yeah, you are so right. You know, AI does not eliminate the human in the loop, and that's the mm -hmm. value. And now the one who is creative. The one who is uh, a problem solver, the one who wants to be heard, the ones one who wants to influence, can do much better job by mm -hmm. using it. Okay. That's the AI <clears throat> makes us makes our skills as a creator, as a presenter, amplifies them. Those mm -hmm. skills. We have more time. The way I think of it, we have more time to do creative things that, yes. that AI is not up to yet. So like if I can get those those clips set up in in two minutes instead of 35 or 40 minutes, then I just bought a whole bunch of time to think, okay, how can I distribute these better? How can this message get out better? How can it be more valuable to the listeners that otherwise I might not have had time for because I was too busy trying to find these three little pieces. Yep, yeah, exactly. So what if companies aren't doing much with AI yet or they're just saying we don't really need chat gpt we don't we don't use that but especially in the tech world what what are some ways that the companies are maybe getting started using ai and seeing some really good benefit in their company initially ah so any business right you can do ai in three places okay 
one in your products, like the products you make, mm -hmm. right? How they have AI incorporated inside to do something better. One is for your processes, your workflows, your operations, how you do, how you build the products, how you manage, monitor, how you provide service, everything. And one is in your customer support. Okay. These mm -hmm. are the three main areas you add AI. Okay. And I tell you, uh, companies can see immediate value, immediate value by integrating AI in customer support. They will see immediate value because now, like, I will give you a specific example. We were working with a customer. They had like this, they would get 8,000 customer support emails or requests per year. And they were outsourcing it to a company and they were paying like 40 bucks per support ticket. Okay. So they were spending over 300K per year for support tickets, right? Yeah. And uh, each ticket on average will take four days to close also because there is average, right? Things take time, less or fast. We put AI automation for them. 60% of tickets resolved almost instantly. Automation and everything. You don't need the person. So this way, the people on the other side could do better job in supporting. And then AI will also improve over time. But it just improves the experience. Just imagine the customer who calls and say, hey, I'm having this issue. I have this problem. How do I do that? And uh, you are not waiting. You are not like a person who does not have the right skill or training at that moment of time by chance, right? And now you have the immediate answer, a good answer, relevant answer, and you solve the problem and move on. That is the thing, like zero weight and zero frustration. Yeah, the, for the customers, I've experienced some of those lately. Both, well, some good, some not. <laughs> but I mean, a recent example of I was trying to get in touch with a particular department in my bank. Whenever I have to call, then you know, your phone call. It's a half an hour phone call. We wait just because they're that system is so slow. So I just got into their chat, and I didn't expect a great result. But I just said, "Hey, I need to. I want to send an email to this department about this product, about this loan. Uh, who do I email?" And it was a human that came on, it, they filtered it. And then they said, let us send you to a human or to a customer care person. And they were on and in less than a minute, they're like, oh, here's the email that you want. But it did all that filtering, got me to the right person who knew how to answer it. It didn't try and answer it itself and just give me some generic email. So like, it gave me new faith in my bank. <laughs> I, I <laughs> they're, tell you. they're good. Yeah, 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 it is, it is true. It is true actually. And I think that's how people should see AI. AI is an assistant and use it in your process the way you want to use it. Okay. It, it's, it's not about always a virtual agent. It's an assistant. Okay. Mm -hmm. AI is not replacing us. Okay. AI is basically augmenting us. Okay. That's how people have to see. Businesses have to see. They have to use AI as a toolbox, like the way yeah. we use software, right? Like, you know, my father had a business and he was using books and like, how do you call them? Notebooks, right? The mm -hmm. books with pen and <laughs> for managing the business. And I don't think anybody does that anymore. Or So, right? So, same thing, right? Like you have the new tools and use it. AI is another tool. And like the software made our life easy, right? The spreadsheets, the docs, sure. the, everything, same thing. AI is another tool. Just use okay. it. You mentioned that one of the big places to use it is products. So, how... What are some examples or how could a, a tech company use this in either product development or, or whatever stage of the product process makes right. more sense? Okay. So yeah, yeah. No, and both are separate areas. Using okay. in products and in the making in the process. Okay. So mm -hmm. let me tell you some examples in the process first. Okay. So in the process, right, like you have a lot of engineers working and you have new engineers, right? A new engineer joins, the person has to be onboarded, trained, and the person doesn't know everything, right? right? But just imagine if there was a knowledge sharing bot available with the whole knowledge of the company. Everything that they have in Wiki, Confluence, email, all the past bugs, and the engineer could just ask, hey, have you seen this bug before? I'm about to submit this code. Does it follow the guideline of this company, right? And just in privacy, you can talk to a bot in the company and suppose the system was running completely on-premise in your system. So you don't have to worry about the data leaking also. So now the advantage is a person does not have to interact with people. Person is not a field because you are uncomfortable when you are new in any place, right? Yeah. And now you can get help from a bot and perform better. You have knowledge. 
So knowledge is huge boon for the companies, right? Hey, has this bug happened before? How do I solve it? What are the best design practice? How do I do this? You know, like help the engineer for the process. Or you know what? If they are manufacturing something, for example, and or even in software, you can do it. I right? think like this. There is a correlation between what you are doing and the defects that will be seen in the field after some mm -hmm. time. Now, just imagine if the AI could tell. And so if you do something, so suppose you were manufacturing something and there are cameras monitoring everything, the pipeline. And if they, I'm very sorry. Uh, so if you were manufacturing something and you have cameras on the machines and if a machine is producing something which is deviating from the normal behavior, AI can pick it up. And then AI says, hey, there is a problem or there may be a potential problem here. Let's look at it. So AI automates this thing because AI is very good in analyzing or looking at forecasting or mm -hmm. finding anomalies, looking at patterns and can help. That is one very good use case using in manufacturing, quality inspection. They can use it for supply chain management. We have done supply chain. We have done, and I'm sure many people are doing it, as you said, right? So many companies are doing AI. Supply chain management. Hey, this part is, there is a variability. How do you, like, you don't want to, like, order 10 million worth of products, but now you are waiting for $100,000 worth of parts because the lead time is high. You, are, you know, so the supply chain management can be so yeah. improved and so much better. So, so tech company can use it in like these things. They can use it for predictive maintenance. They can use it for, oh, reading the document specs, understanding, making it easy for the people. Or in the products, when I say products, just imagine, right? Like we work with this vending machine company. We added augmented reality inside it. When you are buying a product from uh, sunglasses or jewelry from vending machine, you cannot take it out. You have to buy to take it out. But just imagine when you are sitting, standing on the vending machine and on your phone, you can see each product and see how it looks on you. See, that's a simple use case of AI, right? It helps you to experience the product before without buying it. And that's what where the AI is good at it. It can present, forecast, show you how it might look like. And there are more uses within the product. Same thing, you know, you can make your product so much better. Like there is a company we were working, they make gauges. But now the gauge is a gauge, you know, pressure gauge, temperature gauge, or some sensor producing some data. That's just data. But just imagine if it was correlated. And now instead of the gauge just telling you the value, it could tell that your overall system may fail in three weeks because of the problem. That's the beauty. Yes. Like, the, you, know, you know, like you know, the car, car has engine light, right? And when the engine light turns up, you are like, oh my God, can I even drive now? Uh, how soon, how much time I have left, right? right? And just imagine instead of that amber engine light, there was a blue engine light, which came up and which said, you have four weeks, you should go to a mechanic in four weeks. Oh my God, that's so good. That's the predictive maintenance piece. And that's what AI can bring inside the product, make the car smarter. Of course, we know self-driving cars and everything, but these are some other use cases. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. That would be valuable. I, I, not just an on-off light, but something that has either colors or different modes for different priorities. How important is this? Yes. Yeah, it's interesting. So, useful. so you're the CEO. You mentioned you've started uh, several companies, but you're currently the CEO of, is it pronounced SecoMind? It's kind of like second mind without the D? Yes, yes, it okay. is. <laughs> So what is that? What, what's that company about? And kind of what was your motivation behind getting that started? So, um, you know, like uh, I mentioned internet, right? I, I believe that everybody should have access, have a cell phone and everybody should have access to internet, okay? People mm -hmm. should have it because this is basic communications for people in the world, right? And there is still a lot of world without the internet, okay? But I also believe that Everybody should have access to AI also. They should have AI because when they have AI, they will do better. They will perform better. They will have more time to, as you said earlier, more time for their own creativity, more right. time for their own life, right? More time to do something because a large number of world sadly get stuck in their day to day job and they have no opportunity to get out and do better for themselves because mm -hmm. they don't have time. And they are doing a lot of repetitive, monotonous jobs. They don't have, they cannot get out of it. Or businesses also are not able to find themselves that they are not able to hire more people. That's how they think, okay, I need to hire more people to do more. No. Well, it's not about that. And I believe in like 
what would be the phrase democratizing ai everybody mm -hmm. should have access to ai we started seco mind with the principle that hey there should be ai wherever there is data and it should be available to people uh, so that they can use it it should be available to businesses that they have ai ai everywhere okay and uh, we started this we have been building ai for many companies uh, we built our own platform to enable easy ease of ai and you know last year chat gpt came and thanks to them they did a lot of marketing so <laughs> world is now it's it helped me so much it's yeah. like you know we three years back when we used to do a lot of companies were doing it but those were the companies or people who were like you know on who live on the edge or who want to do new or something but yeah. now it became like everybody you know what yeah. everybody is doing ai <laughs> so which makes life easy but that was our principle to bring ai to businesses everywhere okay so what kind of benefits are you seeing uh, from these companies that have have used your systems or your techniques they are some com one company actually told us uh, they were able to do their their revenue increased last year uh, two times mm -hmm. year over year wow. companies are seeing revenue increase companies are seeing cost decrease companies are seeing uh, one of the biggest thing they are telling us is this 24 by 7 access so which removes anxiety from the people so is you know what somebody needs help somebody needs support somebody needs something wants to solve a problem they can instantly talk to a system and get help that's the beauty mm -hmm. that just simplifies like rather than providing a 24 by 7 service where people are there to provide support now there is AI helping most of the people. Most of the use cases are just helped automatic. So it becomes a good AI is helping people self-service significantly all the time without mm -hmm. ever reaching a human. And so I would say revenue, cost, and uh, making a 24 by 7 good experience, internal or customer yeah. experience, that is one of the biggest thing they're seeing, these three okay. things. Okay. So, so with this whatever you call it, excitement, growth of, of AI, you know, from chat GPT and others. How's that changing your business? I mean, are you getting more people coming to you? Is oh. it changing kind of what you're going to be doing for the next year or two? Oh, Change your yeah. priorities? No, we are so busy. <laughs> we are so busy. <laughs> Honestly, That's good. We, yeah, we are so busy. And uh, we are enjoying, we are solving the problems. People are coming up with interesting problems, sometimes same problems, and uh, we have solutions. Sometimes we are creating new solutions. Uh, it is fun and it is like, uh, we have never been so busy in business. In okay. the last uh, six months, I would say super busy. And uh, it's like, uh, we are meeting so many new customers. We are working with so many interesting companies of all size. I think it business is growing. I expect business to grow because you know what? AI is like the new software or the electricity. You know, like once yeah. it comes, everything has to change. Like when the electricity came, the whole world had to change. And mm -hmm. same with the software, the whole world. Now software went everywhere. Even my mom can say, oh, yeah, that's not a hardware issue. It's a software issue. She was like, I, she surprised me. There was some set-up box issue, and she said, yeah, that software needs update. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's the thing, you know? Software, yeah. software is in everything in the world, right? Yep. Same thing is going to happen with AI. It has to be in everything. So you can imagine every business in the world, every software in the world, Every hardware in the world will be touched by AI. So you can imagine that. And I think that's why so much excitement and interest. Of course, there is a stress that, oh, AI will eliminate jobs and AI, AI will eliminate jobs. It's not that it will not. However, it is creating so much opportunity that will outbalance it. Yeah. There will be so much additional stuff happening at every level like everything like this every business in the world will add ai and not just one ai in multiple forms of ai every business will add ai somebody will add it for managing their books somebody will add it for in their products somebody for process customer support so much ai it's everywhere and every business is unique so it's a uh, good time so for next it, few years i guess I, I see it as kind of similar to the way software as it was rolling out um yes. you know maybe they first started hey we're Accounting is going to use it for an Excel spreadsheet. Well, well now I need to add word processing. You know, uh, 
logistics and all kinds of other things. Probably AI is a, a, something similar, maybe on a faster pace, but just all these different areas. Of, let's add it here and then just keep letting it proliferate throughout the company. Throughout and everywhere in everything yeah. it has to. Yeah, everything will be touched by it. I don't think there will be anything which will be like, oh, we are not using AI. Like, you know, the, this look, look at it like the Zoom call, right? Like they are use AI to blur the image, blur the background. They're doing things already. People even yeah. did not even realize. They just li liked it, even did not think that this is AI happening, right? Yep. It's like, uh, you know, like your uh, your car had cruise control when it was added in 70s, I think. And that was a good intelligent system added. And now it's taken for granted. That's how yes. it is. Everything will become like that with the AI. AI will be part of everything we do. Yep. Yeah, agreed. So you're the author of a book entitled Artificial Intelligence for Wireless Networking. What was the motivation behind that? What's, what was the, oh, the reason? Wow. I have been in Wi-Fi space since 1999. Okay. I've been, I worked for, uh, we were involved, I, I worked for a company called Symbol, and we were doing a lot of uh, work on Wi-Fi Alliance. It was pre-Wi-Fi, and Wi-Fi got defined, and I have worked in many Wi-Fi companies establishing, building Wi-Fi standards, producing products in that space, okay? okay. And uh, I tell you, wireless networks, everything is good. We need it, but they are part of life, right? Like they are also, Wi-Fi is another one of those inventions. I don't think anybody can live without it, right? No. But Wi-Fi is complex when it comes to the quality. When it doesn't give quality, everybody is in dark, right? And it's not mm -hmm. just you and me are in dark as a consumer, right? Like as a company which is supporting it, they are in dark. You know, when you call somebody, they don't know, right? Uh, I give you an example. Wi and Wi-Fi will behave erratically for so many reasons. Okay, it's like this, you know what, we had deployed Wi-Fi in Walmart and uh, everything was good until Friday. And then Monday they were saying, oh, Wi-Fi is not good in this area. And we don't know, we didn't change anything, no upgrade, nothing, what happened? And right, and then we found out after talking, somebody tells us, oh, there was a super sale. So everything on the shelves got sold in that area. So there were a lot of metal shelves creating noise. And that is oh. the thing. Our noise. Yeah, things like this can happen. Random, right? And but the, that's the thing. Wi-Fi, su such an important piece of network, such an important thing, but it does not have self-healing. It doesn't prioritize mm. things. It's like, you know what? I'm using Wi-Fi. I'm in a Zoom call with you doing a podcast, and my son is playing games. And you know what? Hey, my podcast is important. Somebody needs to protect my podcast <laughs> or some fighter. That's the key thing, you know, like that yeah. whole thing. AI is for making the wireless network work better for the people. A Wi-Fi network work better for the people at home or businesses. And uh, I always like, I, I pushed into it because I worked with a lot of people and they were saying, oh, no, no, no. Why with AI doesn't give you reliability. AI is all about probability, predict prediction. And I was like, yeah, but that's what matters. You cannot have everything uh, well-defined and you do this so that you can give the best possible experience in that scenario to the user. Yeah. And that's where I wrote the book and to build it and examples and applications. So I assume the Walmart example you had there where the, the shelves got oh, wiped out and there was all the, the metal was creating uh, interference. If an AI system had camera feeds, it could take a look at the store and say, okay, what's changed? And and it could identify, it could look for exposed metal shelving or a whole bunch of refrigerators running or you know, something like that. Um, so that's where it could come in and help help do some of the diagnosis. And maybe even proactively might see it before the problem really occurs. Yes. And actually, you know what? That pattern, recognizing the pattern that this is about to happen. Mm -hmm. and that's the, and that is the, so useful. Like we, we work with a vending machine operator he had like 250 vending machines and uh, those open vending machines, kiosks, mm -hmm. I don't know what they call. Yeah. And so he had those and he was running almost two to three times a week to fill one vending machine going out of apples, one vending machine going out of muffins, one vending machine going out of Coke and things keeps happening. And he was maintaining a 20,000 square feet warehouse, okay, to store the stuff. And oh. now he has he has expiry happening because he bought extra, 
Okay, so now he he was like going through this, and then we said, hey, how about, and we implemented AI for him, and the AI was this. He could ask the AI, hey, or ask the bot, like that's how we implemented. He would ask it, hey, I'm going shopping today. What should I buy so that I don't have to shop for next thirty days? And it will create a shopping list based on the pattern, sale purchase pattern, and everything. Right? It has the yeah. sales forecast. It creates a good pattern. He put that. He reduced so much wastage, and he reduced his trips. Instead of like so many trips, he was doing one to two trips a month. And he was like, whoa, suddenly I'm saving so much time, energy, and not wasting product. That's what AI can do so much. Understand the patterns, create the right reasonable solution for you. Okay. That's interesting. It's exciting to hear all these stories and all the different ways that it can can improve business, businesses that then can also improve our lives. Yes. Um, so, okay. What's, you've, you've talked about a lot of different activities and a lot of different things that you do and have done. What's the favorite part of your job today? I, I tell you, my favorite world in my life has been create. Okay. Mm -hmm. Create is my favorite word. Okay. I love creating things and problem solving is also another kind of create. Right. And uh, I think with the AI or even in my past lives, it was like the problem solving, creating solutions was my fun. It's just like hey, ability to create and solve. And now with the right AI tools, solve it even faster and move even faster forward. I am enjoying it. It's like that satisfaction. It's like the craving in my mind, like to just keep solving and finding and creating. And that's my enjoyment. The other part is like working with people. And okay. which is like my energy comes from people. I, I think I'll be dead if there were no people around me or I had nobody <laughs> to talk to. <laughs> okay. Yep. Understood. Even with all our electronics and all our uh, separate communications, there's there's still that that in person and actually working with someone. Yeah. Yes. Okay. What's uh, I read a lot of books, and I know the the audience always loves to to hear some recommendations. What's a favorite book that you've read, fiction or nonfiction? Oh, many, <laughs> uh, many, many books. But uh, let me give you one book. Uh, um, that uh, blueprint. Have you heard about this book? This I is a, you haven't blueprint. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Book is about how our DNA makes us who we are. Okay. Oh. It's like a, you know, uh, one of the most fascinating thing in my life is this destiny versus free will. <laughs> I think it's for everybody, right? Figure out is it all destiny or is it free will? Mm -hmm. Or is it an illusion of destiny or is it an illusion of free will? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yep. uh, this, this book is from Robert Plowman. Um, very good book. It is a he's a geneticist. It's a and he is uh, the the thing is about like you know there is something about like lot of like we start from one cell mm -hmm. and like that one cell grows and it that cell knows where the hand where the limbs where the nails where the eyes everything and all this right we grow and the brain and how to breathe. Everything, the neural brain, everything is coming from the original one cell, right? So DNA has everything to, that defines us and we get built there. But when we are built there with that, so it carries a whole bunch of memories inside it. How to react to certain situations that coming yeah. from my parents, that are coming from their grandparents. So probably I have a lot of behaviors that are coming because 80% of my behavior is because of my ancestors, and the learning they had, right? And then some coming from uh, epigenetics, coming from my father only or my mother only. And that is also there, some epigenetics which are not fully in the DNA gene, but they are around there and affecting the behavior and everything. And if you think of all these things, suddenly it defines like how I react to a situation is almost encoded in my, me from day one before the day, the day I was conceived. And if you start thinking like this, it's like, oh my God. So I am not I, who I think I am. <laughs> and <laughs> I have a definition of I am, I think. Uh, so, you know, this is where I find this book very interesting to learn this and discover yourself that everything which we do, is it, is it me or is it like... Uh, you know, something else. Some people who came. 
<laughs> it's the DNA. It says there is nothing me here. Everything is DNA plus a whole bunch of action and reaction happening. Yeah. So I am nobody. Maybe then that is the truth. <laughs> that's an interesting combination. I hadn't thought about that. I'll have to. I'll pick up that book and. Uh, you have to. You have to. I'm, I'm sure a, that sounds interesting. It's read. Yes, it's a must read. Okay. So what's ahead for you and and your team at Second Mind for for the next year year and a half? Other than building, just staying on top of all your work, <laughs> staying on top of our working building, we have built this platform uh, which we call Studio X, which is a AI platform. I think we will keep growing it, developing it. I want to see it deployed in like thousands of companies, of course, right? Um, and just uh, I I want to do one thing. I really want to do it is I want to create something to help people do their make their personal life better i want to do something in the ai i think we will do something on site to build something so that people can use it for their personal assistant to make their life sure. better so that they can perform better in their job they can learn right and they can grow i want to do something in that space also on the side okay <clears throat> certainly a, a need for that i'm sure there's a lot of opportunities um, yes i think there that. is a need yeah and people i don't think people will get the main thing is people don't even get time to learn because they're so busy in their job and everything, right? So I want to do some things so that expedite them because like chat GPT came, but if you see like the number of people who are using chat GPT per month is like 150 million. So, yep. and we are a world of 8 billion people. Okay. Yeah. So, so there is an opportunity for everybody to use and chat GPT yeah. may not be the right answer for everything. It does something, but it doesn't do a right. lot of so yeah. there is an opportunity and how people will use in their own particular life. I think that is, we should enable it. We should do something to make that happen. Yeah. I will keep watch for that and, and <laughs> see when you, when you get it done, just make it, make it fun. There's some tools out there like that, but they're a little, little dry, a little boring. So if you can make it engaging and fun, um, which AI should be able to, or maybe even adapt to people's personalities. What's, what's most intriguing to them. Yes. Um, I, th I think that will be fun. If it is fun, it will yeah. be easy. It will be easier. I agree. Okay. Well, I want to, kind of time is running out here, but I want to thank you for your time and sharing the great information, the great stories. It's, it's exciting to hear what you're working on and, and what's going to be coming next. I'm sure some of the listeners may want to learn more about you or the company um, or ask questions. What's the best way for them to reach out and connect? Of course, LinkedIn, right? They can go mm -hmm. to LinkedIn, uh, my link in linkedin.com slash I N slash art of AI. Okay. okay. Or uh, they can uh, email me ajay.malik at secomind.ai. Or you know what? I have a 30 minutes link, 30 minutes.com link. They can schedule a meeting with me. And it's, uh, you know what? It's not like I, in, I invite anybody who is interested in learning about AI or how it can help their career. It's okay. Spend some time with me. I have time. <laughs> I okay. have time because I use AI, so I have a lot of time. So, <laughs> that's, so. <laughs> that's a great way to prove that it works and, and to yeah. give back at the same time. Well, I will put in uh, links, uh, both for your LinkedIn yes, please, profile, please. the email, and and that 30-minute call when I find that. And um, that'll be in the show notes. So so anybody who's listening can go to the show notes and, and find those links easily. Very so nice. I want to thank you. It was a great call. I, I learned a lot. And just it's so exciting what could be happening with AI what is happening and what's, what's going to be coming and how it will make so many lives better. And let, but for me personally, to be selfish, uh, let me focus on the creative, innovative things that I love and not as much on the, the things that are a little, little mundane and that I don't, aren't my uh, strengths anyways. So. Very, very nice. No, good talking to you. And you know, if I can help you in any way, let me know, ping me. <laughs> okay. We'll do that. Well, All thanks right. again, AJ. I appreciate it. Okay, take care, sir. Take Thanks. Care.